live streaming. It's definitely becoming super, super popular for creators. And I recently got into live streaming myself, but it took me a minute because to be honest with you, the idea of live streaming seemed kind of intimidating. Like how did all the technical stuff work together? But I finally decided to just dig into it, do some research. And I ended up choosing a platform called StreamYard to help me with my live streams. And I picked it because it's super easy to use, but it has some bells and whistles if you really want to amp up your live stream. So today I'm going to show you how to use StreamYard. I'm going to go over my seven favorite features. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some best practices for live streaming. Let's just get right into it. So the first thing you need to do is go to StreamYard.com and create an account. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and log in. And this is what the back end of StreamYard looks like. So there's really not so much to see yet at this point. What we wanna do is create an upcoming broadcast. So to do that, I'm just going to hit the create broadcast and I could use either a new broadcast or use a pre-recorded video. So it seems like I'm broadcasting live, but I'm really not. Now, in my opinion, the whole point of going live is that it's fun and spontaneous. So I would definitely wouldn't recommend using a pre-recorded video. I definitely recommend going live in almost any circumstance. So I'm gonna select new broadcast and it's going to ask you for your destination. StreamYard integrates with almost any social media platform, especially YouTube. So all you have to do is connect those two accounts together and it's so easy. I'm going to show you how. So you can see here that my other YouTube channel, Jen Jager Pro Tutorials is already connected. If I wanna connect this main channel, I just hit the plus sign and you can see all of these options here. I'm gonna select YouTube channel and it's going to bring up this sign in with Google page, which probably looks super familiar to you. I'm going to select the account that I want. And then it's going to ask me if I want to allow StreamYard to manage my YouTube account. And yeah, I do. StreamYard's not going to do anything to my account that I don't want it to do, but enabling this feature allows me to access all of StreamYard's features, which is kind of the whole point, right? So I'm going to say allow. And I can see now that my YouTube channel is connected. And now I get this window here where I have some fields to fill out. So just like you're posting to YouTube, you want to give your live stream a title and a description. And once I've done that, I get these privacy settings here. Let me drop down and you can see our options are public, unlisted and private. Public means that anyone on the internet can access your live stream. Unlisted means that anyone with a private link can access your live stream. This is great if you're on like a corporate event situation and you have maybe uh, team members from all over the country that you want to be able to tune into this live stream, but it's not really for public consumption. And then private means that it's password protected. Those are the exact settings that you get on YouTube channels when you post YouTube videos. So we're going to select unlisted for now, and I'm going to select create broadcast. So now we've created our broadcast. If we want to get that unlisted link, just hit this little three dots here and select a view on YouTube. And this is what it looks like on the back end. It shows the header of my broadcast here. It says that we're waiting here for my broadcast. Over here on the right side of my screen is where my live chat will appear. So I might wanna send a message to everybody who's waiting. And then if I wanted to give people access to this live stream, this link here is what I would send out to everyone to access this video. All right, let's go back to StreamYard and enter the studio. And here, this is what my camera setup looks like. So you can see that I can test my microphone and check out my shot, make sure I'm happy with it. There's some settings here I can play with. Um, in general, I can change my broadcast quality. I can shift my videos up for comments and banners, which is something you'll see later in this video. Um, audio avatars means that people will see an avatar if someone's camera is turned off and automatically add shared screens or videos to stream means that when you go to share a video, it will instantly share to your stream. If you have like a producer working with you, someone else pressing all the buttons while you're doing the live stream, you may want to disable that. That allows them to queue up screens and kind of get everything in order before you set it live. But if you're just looking for simplicity, I would leave this checked. Under camera, this is where my settings are for my camera and my resolution. Under audio, I can determine which mic my sound will be pulling from, and I can enable some extra features like echo cancellation 
or um, automatically adjust my mic volume, I would definitely recommend having those turned on. I can choose a virtual background. So right now I'm on blur. I can turn that off. Um, if you have a green screen, you can put in a green screen background as well and you can upload your own background. Under hotkeys, you can set keyboard shortcuts for different functions within StreamYard. Like if you wanna share a screen or share a video or change your layouts as well, you can do that with shortcuts. You'll see that you're able to do that with your mouse in the StreamYard studio, but some people just prefer shortcuts and using their keyboards. So if you like to do that, this is where you would set those keyboard shortcuts custom for yourself. And then under guests, if you have guests joining your live stream that are gonna be on screen with you, you can have some customization here as well. They can either see the viewer comments or not. You can play a sound when guests enter, so you don't have to keep your eye on the studio screen at all times. And you can set it so that guests must authenticate themselves. It's an extra security feature if you need it. And you can also set banned guests if you have guests that have become problematic and you don't want them to come back into the live stream. All right, let's do it. Let's enter the studio. And this is what the studio looks like. Now you can see that there are many different layout options here at the bottom of the screen. If I wanna bring myself to the front and center of the screen, I would just click myself in the bottom left corner here and say, add to stream. And here I am, I'm added on the stream, but I'm not live yet. When I am ready to go live, I'm going to hit this big blue button on the top right of the screen. Now beneath that button, there are a lot of other features that we are gonna talk about, but for now, this is what the stream will look like. Let's just do it, let's go live. All right, I'm gonna click on over to YouTube so you can see what it looks like from the YouTube side of things. There is a 10 second delay. All right, let's go back to StreamYard and we can end the broadcast there. So now that you know the basics about going live on YouTube with StreamYard, let me show you my seven favorite things about this platform. First, there's a free version of StreamYard. The only thing to know about the StreamYard free version is that you're always going to have that StreamYard logo at the top right corner of your live streams. Maybe that doesn't bother you, but if it does, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade to a paid plan. But if you're just getting started with live stream, it's pretty awesome to have a free option like this. The second thing that I like is that you can stream to multiple platforms at once. So I'm not talking just like, let's say both of my YouTube channels. I could also simulcast to Facebook as well. And then I can customize these streams for each destination. So it could be unlisted on one channel, but public on another. And I could have different titles and descriptions for each stream, even though in the end, they're all streaming the exact same content. This is great if you wanna do like a global takeover and just stream across multiple platforms at once, StreamYard lets you do that. All right, the third thing I really like about StreamYard is that I can schedule a broadcast for later and I can upload a custom thumbnail image that will be shown in the meantime while I'm promoting my content. This is what it looks like on YouTube when you've scheduled a broadcast and you've created a thumbnail. It gives people an alert about how many days until the live stream happens. They can ring the bell to be notified when you're about to go live. And the live chat starts right away. So people that are excited about it can let you know in advance. And the fourth thing I really love about StreamYard is the way you can customize the way your live streams look. So this applies if you're on a paid version of StreamYard. On the right side of the screen, you have options for branding and banners. Let's start with brands. And you can change the color of the elements that you're gonna flash up on the screen to any color you want that matches your brand. And you can change the theme of your branding so you get a bubble look, a classic look, a minimal look, or a block look. The next option down is for the logo. By default, you have the Powered by StreamYard logo, but you can switch it to something custom. For instance, this is the logo for my latest course, Motion Launchpad. So while I'm live streaming and I'm talking about this program, Apple Motion, I can remind people that I do have a course on my website, jenjager.com, if they wanna check it out. And I can like literally point to it in the screen and reference it. So I love that very much much. And then you have this whole option here for banners that you can call up during your live stream. 
and you just create a new banner that says anything you want. The background is going to be the branded color that we picked in the last menu. And so you can just click on the banners at the appropriate time. Using these banners does take a little bit of pre-planning. You probably don't wanna be like typing out your banners during your live stream, but if you know the things that you wanna punch up while you're live streaming, it's just a click of a button to pull up those banners. Or you can have this banner running across the bottom screen the entire time, which I love. All right, before we get to the number five reason I love StreamYard, if you like this video, if you feel like it's really helping you pump up your live streams, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, number five is how easy it is to bring other guests and configure them on your screen. To invite a guest, just hit the invite button here in studio, copy this link and send it to your guest. So bringing in guests into StreamYard is so incredibly easy and they can be anywhere in the world and joining your live stream. It makes your live stream much more dynamic. The number six thing I love about StreamYard is that you can see the live chat on YouTube right in the StreamYard studio. So you don't have to keep checking away from StreamYard to see what's going on in your live chat. If people have questions or comments, if they're giving you super chat money, then you can thank them and it's all really just happening out of the corner of your eye on your screen. So I love that the live chat feature is integrated with StreamYard. These two programs work together so well. This is what makes StreamYard such a great choice. And the last thing I love about StreamYard is that you can roll video clips in the middle of your live stream you can just add any video clip by hitting this plus sign here, selecting your video and opening it. The video will take a little bit to upload, so make sure you upload it before you start your live stream and then you can fire it off to run at the very beginning of your live stream, at the very end, or even smack dab in the middle. Just make sure it's an MP4 file. That's what's compatible with StreamYard. All right, now let me give you some of my best practices for live streaming. The first thing you want to do is pre-schedule your live stream so that you can promote them on whatever platform you're streaming to. So when I'm promoting on YouTube, I will use the community posts to let people know I have a live stream, to remind them about it again before the live stream starts, and then to thank everybody for joining the live stream to promote to people who didn't actually join the live stream live but can still watch it after the fact. You definitely want to upload a custom thumbnail that generates some excitement to make sure that people ring that notification bell so that they're notified 30 minutes before your live stream starts so they don't miss a thing. Another thing you may want to think about if you're doing any sort of screen sharing during your live stream is to have a second screen set up so that you can have your StreamYard studio on one monitor and then whatever it is you're sharing in a screen share on a second monitor. That way you have everything conveniently located for your screen share in one place, but you can still monitor the live chat in StreamYard and the layout switching and all adding all your banners and stuff like that in the StreamYard studio. Another thing to think about is if you're having a live guest, you're probably gonna wanna utilize some earbuds so you're not getting feedback between the audio that's coming out from the StreamYard studio at you and the audio you're pushing out into your microphone. You wanna kinda keep those separate, so earbuds are definitely a must. And the last thing I would recommend is just have fun and know that anything can happen. Even if things go a little bit sideways ways. It keeps people watching. So don't feel too much pressure about doing live streams. You know, not everything has to be perfect and people don't expect it. And to be honest, I think they kind of like it when it's not perfect. I had a little bit of coughing fit in my first live stream and I thought I was going to die of embarrassment. But honestly, I kind of think in a weird way, it kept people watching. It reminded them that they were watching something totally spontaneous. Make sure that you're engaging with people in the live chat and just like embrace the messy liveness of it all. Are you guys excited to do some live streaming? Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, what feature in StreamYard you thought was the coolest. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again.